This is the Argon News Network, where today we're actually talking about the news. Welcome, fans and friends of the Argon. Today we have some absolutely breaking news. This is probably the biggest story in technology this year, this decade, this century, and probably this millennium. It is a scorcher. Yeah, not this one. Nobody cares about this one. This one's like, no, no, no. What I'm talking about is it. Remember, um, Bernardo Castro a while back had been teasing us with it is eight. It is infinite. It is coming. He was doing it all over social media. We got some grainy paparazzi style pictures. And if you listen carefully, this is from one of my recent videos. Listen up. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, maybe uh, Microsoft has uh, realized that the Xbox is is not really the way to go. Is going to shut down development on that and moving its entire gaming billions onto an Argon Light based 8-bit gaming platform. All right, and then here is is it is out. It is an Argon Light based gaming platform called the Argon 8 or the Argon Console 8. Booyah! called it on several pieces of social media. The man himself has confirmed that, yes, I did call it and that I indeed have bragging rights. So, brag, 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 brag. And that was completely random. It was a guess. It was a complete guess. But, yep, that's what it is. Um, Hackster's picked it up, right? That's that, that's uh, always a good thing for a buzz. This is what it looks like on the outside. And it comes from a company called Heba or Heba, based in the UK. Um, it looks like this on the inside. Uh, it has these 9-pin D-sub joystick ports, which is different. We'll get back into that later. Nice case, nice Infinity 8 logo design, all of that. And is based on the Argon Origins. So, uh, well, that's that, that's great news, right? Right, yet, yet another Argon. Now, because we are in a news champ business right here, I want to draw your attention to a comment that uh, Bernardo Castro himself felt compelled to put upon of my very early Argon videos where I use the word proliferation, proliferation of incompatible models. And here he says, I read it for you, I give you my personal assurance and promise that we will not create an endless family tree of Argon variants. We will not fragment the ecosystem system. Tsvetan 6502 computer is not an Argon. Argon 65X is the only variant we will make, etc, etc. Argon Lite, aka Argon Origins, is not a new ver version. It's a new board revision, and it's so on and so forth. And if we ever make Argon Heavy, another one, it will be backwards compatible with Argon Lite. Well, phew, that's a load off, right? Um, but my journalist instincts kicked in here and methinks the lady doth protest too much, right? If there's this kind of denial coming from authority, kids, this is new. Back in the olden days, before the internet and social media, journalists actually used to question authority. And hang on to your seats and hold on to your TikToks because we're going to do that right now. It's an it's, uh, unpleasant, uh, unfamiliar experience, but it's good for you. And I mean, you know, I'm not sure we can trust a man who actually deep fries his circuit boards, right? He claims to be Dutch. Only the Belgians deep fry their circuit board. We won't know on that until we find out whether he puts mayonnaise or mustard on top. So stay tuned on that one. So as you know, uh, I'm honorary member of the United Nations Multiple Committee. And in this case, it's the Non-Proliferation Committee. So let's have a sharp look at this statement statement from the man himself that there won't be a proliferation of uh, and fragmentation of the ecosystem with a critical eye. Watching you guys, watching you, ha <laughs> ha this is journalism. So we have a highly scientific uh, matrix, you always need a matrix, could potentially call it a, uh, you know, a magic quadrant or something like that, and no, I'm not going to go there. So we have two axes. Across the X horizontal axis, we have the Castropometer, which uh, is whether the actual board was fully designed by um, Bernardo Castro or whether it was designed or tweaked by others who are not him. And on the vertical axis, we have the compatibility axis with the argon versus incompatible. 
So, let's get cracking. Number one, the very original Argon, the sexy green one which started off this avalanche, this revolution of 8-bit computing in the 2020s. Um, so, well, that by definition is the original, so that's uh, compatible, all fine. I'm not perfectly sure about the timelines, but sometime soon after that one, we had the Argon Lite 2, designed by uh, Olimex. Best thing to come out of Bulgaria since the 1955 one Leva note. I have one of those. Um, so, and that's completely compatible, slightly redesigned, cheap, uh, but it runs the same firmware, the same OS, so it's com uh, compatible down to the firmware level. Says so on the Olimex documentation. It's on the internet, must be true. Next one to look at, well, it, I think this is actually the first one. This is the Cerberus 2080, designed by Bernardo already a while back. It's incompatible, but it's not an Argon, right? It happens to have a Z80 chip, but it also has a 6502 and a third processor. Now, the reason why people might get confused because some of the VDP word by Dean Belfield is on here. And now um, we have Nihirash who is doing firmware for this at an incredible Georgian speed. So, uh, well, not for this one, for the next one. But anyway, so that note, it's not an Argon, so it's not proliferation. Next one down here, completely out of nowhere, the ESP32 SBC Fab GL. Um, Olimex is great at making computers. They might need to get somebody to name that thing. That sounds like a fax machine out of the 80s, right? But that is uh, does not designed uh, by Banado, but it's nowhere near an Argon. It's not even 8-bit. It's just an ESP32 system on a chip with some connections on the outside. So, no, nope, uh, that's fine there. Then now we have the Cerberus 2100, which is the one for which Nihirash is developing basic and all kinds of things at lightning speed. Again, nothing to do with the Argon except a bit of shared hardware. So, we're still okay. Next in line, we have the Argon Origins ed Edition, right? That's the latest one. That's what I think we saw in the deep fryer earlier, which is just a tightened up, cleaned up version of the Argon for people with nostalgia who think that this will ever have collectability value or whatever before the heat death of the universe. But hey-ho, fully compatible, made by the man himself. No proliferation there. Then we have my own personal favorite. Oh, by the way, may I show? <laughs> Look what I got here. Like came in the mail from Olimex. This is one of those ESP32 SBC Fab GL computers. So look out for the unboxing video on this one. And guess what else I have over here? I have a Neo 6502. That was the one which was uh, referred to by Bernardo in his previous comments. So this also is isn't an argon. The only thing it shares is the manufacturer and the principle that you're going to use an older type 8-bit chip, like, like the 6502 or the Z80, and you're going to use a model system on a chip. In this case, it's the uh, RP2040, which is Raspberry Pi. It's like Raspberry Pi's answers at Arduino instead of an ESP32. Not an argon, never claimed to be, no proliferation there. And now we have the final addition to the family, the new little baby, the argon 8 or the Argon Gaming 8 or whatever, we heard about it fully, you know, based on the design of the uh, Origins with those uh, sub-D joystick ports and everything else. So, everything above the line, right, everything that claims to be an Argon is fully compatible on a, you know, MOS and VDP on a system level, right? The operating system wouldn't work if there were incompatibilities. Everything below the line is simply not an Argon. So, whew, we have tested the honor of uh, our dear leader, may he rest, uh, may he live in forever, is safe. But, ha ha ha, not so fast, told you I was watching you. Because especially with the latest development, let's drill into one very simple, not even electronic, not even software. This is an electron, electromechanical aspect of the entire story, which is the joystick. This is a classic j quick shot too with the rapid fire button at the bottom, an absolute beast. And I wish I actually had one of these. I don't I'll keep an eye on that. So what does that look like uh, in the Argon ecosystem? Well, we have this thing made by the Envenomator, Jerome Venom, uh, I'm hope, um, uh, pronouncing that uh, right. Uh, he's the uh, Randy Macho Man Savage of the Argon community. He was there day one side by side with Dean Belfield doing stuff, right? And he, way back, uh, nine months ago or longer, uh, actually designed an Argon joystick interface where you can plug in... Um, 
Uh, I, I, I think it's a SNES controller, right? It uses a GPI opens. Um, it's got, I guess, a couple of resistors or something to and con condenses to debounce. Um, easy to access, right? You access the G GPI open, up, down, left, right, fire. Uh, Bob's your uncle, as they say. No problem there, right? Now, we also have this thing from Olimex, because ah, Tsets Van, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and he was like, oh, I'm designing the Argon Light tune, and just for convenience, purely for convenience, I am including this so-called UX interface, right? Which is an Olimex design interface, which they have on many of their products, which, amongst others, you can buy this thing. Guess what else I got in my little package from Bulgaria? Area. So this here is the 8-pin, 10-pin UX interface, and that goes actually to a Wii interface, and they have the cheap um, Wii uh, nunchucks, right? Guess what? Absolutely no support to be found on the Argon for this as well. Apparently, there's a demo where that thing works with the ESP, but like if I'm running an Argon Lite 2, I might now have to use a different kind of joystick routine software, and I have to support that as a programmer than the Jerome Venoam, than, than, than the Envenomator one. So <laughs> we do have incompatibility um, uh, in there. And I think what Olimex was doing there with their UXT, was that a bit of an ex embrace and extend? Hmm, sneaky people, these, yeah? And then if we go finally, we go look at the... Um, at the Argon 8, well, that is using these sub-D joystick ports, which are actually, you know, compatible with a pin compatible with a classic joystick controller. So good idea there. But there's no documentation. Are these going to behave like a germ, uh, like a one from Envenomator? Are they going to use the UX? Are they going to pretend to be a keyboard? And by the way, lots of developers have been fighting with the keyboards about game because remember the keyboard goes through the VDP and then there's a serial connection over into the Z80. So it isn't that easy. So that's where the proliferation might might be happening, right? Another thing, and I'll give this advice to Heber and everybody for free, I know for a fact, at least from my experience, that the plastic um, nine pin D subs, which the retro joysticks, which we're shooting here, uh, <laughs> pun intended, are going for, when you use those in these proper industrial uh, metal um, uh, nine pin connectors, it's a very tight fit. I don't know why. I think the corners on the plastic might be more pointed, but I definitely had problems pl plugging things like the quick shot into connectors like this 35 years ago. And because the fit is tight, there's a high chance, you know, gamers, what do they have? They have a high finger strength and they have low impulse control, right? So the chance of somebody accidentally literally ripping these connectors off the main board of the Argon 8 is a risk which their engineering team should have a look at. Maybe reinforce may be connected to the housing. Uh, have a look at that. Um, free advice there. Um, I'll take, uh, no, no, I don't need any rewards in case you had noticed I am not in this for the money. So, um, you know, what happens, you know, as a, uh, as a game programmer, I'm going to wind up doing things like this. This is live from my trusty Pentium 26, no, 166 MMX over here in the corner, which started this entire uh, part of the channel. Yep, you're going to, you know, the game's going to come up and it's going to have a screen like this. Civilization, 1991, 32 years ago. Oh, have you got the GPIO-based one? Have you got the Argon 8? Have you got the Olimex Nunchuck? Oh, my God. Um, or, at the moment, you don't even have that, right? If I want to get some of these goings, I probably have to program my own version or adjust my own version of the BD VDP and flash that on the port board and probably do something on the MOS as well. If you think about it, that's kind of like reinstalling Windows 10 because I'm using a different brand of USB mouse. That's not very practical, and if that happens, well, we could, um, you know, we could make a little program which sits alongside the standard operating system. We could call it, and, you know, takes care of these very specific uh, decisions and support about this hardware and that hardware. And what would we call such a thing? Well, we would probably call it a passenger, or maybe we would call it a driver. Yes, evolution strikes again. No monolithic OS. We might actually have a driver architecture developed. Develop on, on the Argon because of this 
proliferation of not quite compatible IO user interface um, methods. And I can imagine my grandchildren, they dig this thing out of the rubbish pit. They are on a space, live on a space station in the orbit of Saturn, and they have to go on the hyperweb archive.org looking for the one driver which will make this thing work with that thing in tw 20, uh, 2070 or something like that. Isn't progress wonderful? Now, to wrap this up, right, I don't think that's a problem, right? If we look back at the period which is like, you know, who are our audience? Them, my age, our age, you know, this is the Argon community. And here's just a snapshot of like the top 30 PCs is a bit of a, oh, sorry, home computers, PCs didn't quite exist yet, which were sort of floating around um, mainly the UK, slightly UK centric view because of the Z, uh, the Z80 was maybe a bit more prevalent in the UK. And we've got 30 of them. I have personally touched probably two-thirds of these somewhere over my lifetime, and they were completely incompatible, right? ZX81 wasn't compatible with the ZX80. The Atom, the Electron, the BBC Micro, similar, but not compatible. There was a Cambrian explosion of, um, of home computers. Nobody knew what this thing was supposed to do and look like, so they just tried, and evolution did its thing. We wound up with some weird stuff, which is not even on the list, list here, like the Commodore Plus 4, oh my god, and, you know, really successful ones. Um, yeah, so... I don't think the proliferation is a bad thing. The Cambrian explosion was like that. You had things with like weird tentacles and three arseholes. So what? Evolution and the forces of the market will take care of this. And hey, the entire community of this is a few thousand people with nine billion people on the planet. Let's proliferate away and fiddle with that. So I think I will conclude our research and journalism here today. I hope you learned something. A little bit of a teaser. Uh, I haven't really genuinely haven't unboxed these. I took them out of the wrapping. So this is spending my winnings from winning that, that programming contest. So got lots of little bits here, including the um, UX Wi-Fi module, right? So I can connect my Argon to Wi-Fi. And I've got this very scary thing, which a USB mail to mail, which you apparently need to this thing, but sounds like a way to fry a mainboard if you plug it in wrong. Anyway, um, maybe even a live stream unboxing of this stuff will come along. Um, so with that, what can I do? I want to thank you for your time. I want to say, um, yep, yeah, uh, please remember to like, uh, share, and subscribe. Remember to tell your friends to like, share, and subscribe. I'm not in it for the money, but I do like um, to, um, you know, it, it gives me a little boost when, when I get that. Uh, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Uh, feel free to hit me up on social media. Uh, Mastodon is where I'm at at the moment, mostly with uh, the loser bum identity. My GitHub is on the loserbum.com homepage page, etc, etc. So um, thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful and a little bit of fun. And with all of that, I can say that you are the Argon community. I am Loser Bum. You are all a bunch of a bloody non-proliferating legends. And I am out of here.